All right, Bulls and Bears, we are back here. Bolts of the Bus, BX4. Let's get right into it. We've got, I think, some huge news here. Uh, very important news here, topics that we need to cover. Some ideas that I wanted to put out there uh, that I've been going over on top of the actual news uh, items here. But I want to give you my take on a couple of things that we're seeing right here. First of all, before we get into the markets and some other economic stuff here, uh, what do we usually see? Around the time of massive debt levels uh, where defaults start increasing, we usually see conflicts, in this case, global conflicts. What did I say right here on this channel? I said, we're going to see things escalate on the war front. And remember, I said this way back before the U.S. got even involved between uh, Russia and Ukraine, before any of this, I said this was going to happen. And again, things are escalating. Uh, we have U.S. warships moving in to defend what they're saying is an expected attack uh, from Iran on to Israel, right? So I'll let you do with that what you will, but the bottom line is global tensions are increasing and therefore the risk is increasing. And I'm talking to all the investors out there and that's one of the big topics here in this channel is do we pull most of our money out of the markets? I've already done that. I still have quite a few stocks I'm in, but compared to what I'm usually invested, uh, I'm at a very, probably the lowest I've been in, in about 10 years as far as the portion of uh, available investment funds that I have in the markets right now, right? So uh, I think the risks are very, very high. And another thing I've said here on this channel is for the mega wealthy that own most of the stocks, for them to go ahead and sell off their stocks, the news or the situation or the event has to be so big and shocking and devastating that it actually overshines or actually outdoes the confidence that the market's always gonna be propped up by the Fed. There's always gonna be easy money. In this case, the lower interest rate hopes uh, have faded away or have began to fade away. And we're seeing some pretty big red days in the market. In fact, let's jump over to some news on that here. Uh, the Dow Jones down bigly. Uh, in fact, it went down over 470 points today. Uh, the worst day since January. Uh, all of you here expected this inflation not going away. Um, what we need is actually deflation. We need a correction. That would be the solution. That would be the cure. But we know that opens up all kinds of other problems that um, would actually be even bigger than what we're seeing now. So they're going to let inflation run hot, even though they're going to try to convince you that inflation is easing, even though the numbers don't even support that at this point, even the, the phony numbers don't support that. But they're going to try to still convince you that things are getting better, things are easing, right? So let's think about this. What type of big news could come out and uh, shock the United States, shock the world? Uh, could it be? And I'm not out here to offend anybody. I'm just letting you know what's in the news here. Could it be that a former president gets indicted? Right. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Right. So uh, that would be pretty huge. Would that bring the markets down? Um, possibly. Uh, would something else bring the market down? Right. A lot of things. Let me know your ideas down in the comments. A lot of things are out there. Very risky times we're living in right now. A lot of weird, uh, unusual things happening with the bridge uh, collapse over there in. Um, where was that at? Maryland. And uh, that could be the scapegoat for the runaway inflation that we're going to see. They could blame that on the supply chains, uh, shortages, and therefore rising prices. Right? But what are we seeing? We're seeing a lot of stores close. We have the 99 cent only store out here in California close. I'm still a little bit sad about that. Uh, I didn't shop there a lot, but it was nice to have that option to just run in and get a drink or whatever. Uh, and why? Why is this happening? Is it just about inflation? Well, inflation's a pretty broad topic. Uh, but one of the things with inflation is workers demand higher wages. And when you have to pay people out here in California anyways, it's going to be $20 an hour now for uh, fast food workers, right? And same thing with a lot of the stores, the pressure is on to pay more to the workers to keep up with the rising cost of living, to keep up with the outrageous housing costs here in California, both home prices and rents. Outrageous, right? So businesses are having to pay more to keep help, to keep workers, but that's going to affect their bottom line. And we see businesses folding now. How many fast food places are going to go under? 
Uh, I think it's going to be a lot in addition to the 99 cent store and also any store that puts the price in the name of the store, like 99 cent only, uh, the Dollar Tree. Uh, after so many years, they're going to end up really in big trouble because they have to now raise their prices. We already saw the 99 cent store raise their prices on lots of items. The Dollar Tree, nothing's a dollar anymore. Uh, the next store that's going to be in big trouble is going to be Five Below which is supposed to be everything $5 and under. Well, they already have things there that are over $5. And pretty soon, will they be able to sell anything for under $5, right? Maybe some tiny items, right? A bag of chips or two bites and it's gone. I mean, something like that. But uh, folks, it's going to get wild. It's going to get even crazier here. But let's go ahead and get into some other news I've got pulled up here for you. All right, and it's pretty interesting what we're seeing right now. At the same time as markets are selling off, we're seeing a lot of strength in gold and silver and what we call safe haven assets, right? And this is historically something that happens before big economic shifts, right? I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but all the ingredients are there. And we see now this, this latest rise in gold and silver, flight to safety, stock selling off, right? Inflation not coming down. We all knew this was going to happen. We knew this day would be here. We just didn't know exactly when. And from here, I think things are really going to uh, speed up and escalate. All right, folks, what else do we have going on here? Well, we have the PPI, that's the producer price index, also remaining elevated. It jumped by another 6.2% annualized March this year versus March of last year. When you look at the three month, the first quarter, the three month uh, combination here, we're annualized at 7.8%, folks. And those costs get passed along to the consumer from the producer price index. But yet they're telling us the consumer, the CPI, the consumer price index, they're saying is only 3.5. Uh, I think it's a lot higher. I think most of you know, and I uh, don't believe any of these official numbers. I don't even believe this producer price index. I think it's a lot higher than that. Um, so buckle up and strap in, folks, because things are about ready to get a lot harder for most people. And what does that mean? Well, when you see the things happening right now that we're seeing in the markets, when you have the consumer, where seven out of 10 people right now are borrowing money to make ends meet, robbing Peter to pay Paul, living on credit cards. Uh, you know, it's it's a matter of time. So what's going to break first, the consumer, uh, the markets, uh, both? Can you imagine both at the same time? It's going to be uh, outrageous. It's going to be a, a wild, wild time if we see some of these things um, co-join and happen in synchronicity, right? right? I'm sure that most of you or even all of you know by now that a lot of big money investors are selling off their positions, going into more cash. We've got um, Zucker Bucks out there uh, from Facebook doing an underground bunker survival, uh, apocalypse type of um, survival bunker, right? So it's not just crazy Eddie up in the mountains anymore preparing for the apocalypse. Now we have billionaires preparing for, for something big to go down. And again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just letting you know what other people are doing and what other, other people are uh, how they're acting, how they're positioning their portfolios, right? So don't listen to what they say necessarily. It's good to listen, but don't believe what they say, but more watch what they do, right? They can talk the talk, but it's much more difficult to walk the walk. And we see how a lot of people are out there, especially big money people, people in the public eye are preparing for something big. Jamie Dimon's out there again, warning of unsettling pressures as bank earnings wobble. So something else to keep an eye on, another warning uh, from Jamie Dimon. Uh, the European Central Bank holding rates steady, although they did basically promise rate cuts uh, coming down the road here, kind of like the Fed. Uh, but when they see these higher inflation numbers, are they going to stick to their rate cuts, right? So they're trying to massage the markets right now, um, give investors some confidence that rate cuts are on the horizon, right? They want to do that because markets are very, um, they're very observant right now to all the risks out there. What they're trying to do is they're trying to ease some of that tension uh, with investors, especially the you know the big money at the top, the top ten percent that own most of the stocks. They're trying to ease that tension by putting some confidence out there. Hey, we're going to cut rates. Inflation's cooling. Well, now they have the numbers that are not backing up what they said they're going to do. So we'll see what happens over in Europe with the central bank over there. We already know what's happening here with the Fed. Uh, they've been promising rate cuts, but they're not able to deliver those. 
uh, with the action that we're seeing right now in the cost of living slash inflation, right? So something else to keep an eye on, consumer credit signals, outright weakness, spending may drop, right? Huge. This is huge, folks. Consumer spending, when it stops or slows down even, that's when you really see the economic downturn shift into the next gear. Why? Because consumer spending is the driver. The money that you spend or the money that people spend in general, whether it's money they had saved up or whether it's borrowed money or money put on a credit card, uh, which is most of spending, by the way, borrowed money, money put on a credit card, not money people have saved. When you look at the savings rate, we're near a 40-year low, folks. Um, the savings rate's very ugly right now. So it's mostly borrowed money, a.k.a. credit issued from the banks, from the credit card companies. When that starts slowing down, when credit uh, gets tighter, and when credit ceilings drop, when credit limits drop on credit cards, like we saw in the financial crisis, that's when the rubber really hits the road, and that's when the economic collision uh, basically accelerates, right? Uh, so what's it saying here out of this article here? Stocks are facing pressure as markets digest the disappointing earnings report from banks. We talked about that just a few minutes ago. Jamie Dimon's out there warning about that. Uh, Wealth Chief Investment Officer Cameron Dawson joins Yahoo to discuss the market outlook. And here's where we talk about credit. Here We talk about that a lot in this channel. Dawson notes that she's closely following bank discussions about credit health for both consumers and corporation. In other words, how end consumers are dealing with higher for longer environment, right? So there's only so much the consumer can take with the existing balances on credit cards, loans, everything else, the record amounts of debt right now, uh, over 17 trillion versus only 12 trillion that we saw back in the financial crisis, right? So things are much more difficult now for the consumer. That's why I'm saying here, it's just a matter of time. And now they can't cut rates, right? So we all know where this leads. Please let me know down in comments though. Um, you know, is there gonna be something big that comes out to justify the market sell-off to try to cover up all this underlying uh, weakness with the consumer, uh, with the companies, and uh, everything else you know that we talk about here all right folks let's go ahead and transition a little bit here this is crazy folks look at fast food inflation and i'm going to bring up a chart here and this is a list of several different fast food companies let's look at mcdonald's at the very top here a hundred percent increase folks this is 10 years so from 2014 to 2024 a 100 percent increase basically that's prices doubled what is it about McDonald's where prices have doubled? I don't even like McDonald's. Uh, and I wouldn't buy, even back in 2014, I barely ate a McDonald's. The one thing that I am kind of a, got a weakness for is the milkshakes. Um, but uh, yeah, 100% increase. Next one down, Popeye's, right? Popeye's chicken. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Where Starbucks is in there, almost 40%. Uh, Subway's in there, almost 40% uh folks this is insane right so none of this adds up to this 3.9 percent 3.5 percent if it was just three percent a year even for 10 years you wouldn't see prices doubling or going up 80 percent 70 percent was that chipotle um having a hard time read some of the icons here anyways that is what is really happening folks and this is just one example um uh, if you ask most people Nobody sees 3% inflation, right? So the whole thing is a joke. Uh, it's a scam. Uh, it's phony. They want you to buy it, uh, but you're not buying it. I'm not buying it, right? So we're on top of this. I think we're going to be just fine. We just have to keep on watching the indicators here. Um, the 10-year yield, look at that creeping up again here. That's a sign that foreign investors do not want the junk debt basically issued out of the U.S., right? Keep an eye on all these signs, folks. And we're going to be just fine. We're going to stay on top of it. And we're going to have plenty of dry powder, hopefully, uh, on the side when we see more uh, better buying opportunities, right? Uh, when we see the inevitable correction, right? I'm starting to lean more in that direction versus just inflation to infinity because of all the risks out there and all the news that could drop and really, really scare the market. You know what I mean? So um, please let me know again what you think about this. Um, the trick. The trick right now with the cost of living inflation is having dry powder, having cash on the side ready to go. That way, if better buying opportunities arise uh, over the horizon here down the road, that you actually have money. Again, most people not able to save money 
uh, more than half the people right now are going further into debt uh, each month versus actually staying out of debt, paying off their debt, and then building their savings. That's very difficult right now with the cost of living. So then when the prices do correct, a lot of people won't have anything to invest uh, and uh, the bubbles are going to burst. A lot of these people bought assets at the peak of the bubbles, you know, yet to be seen. But if we see the big correction slash deflation slash recession, then that will indicate the bubbles have popped and a lot of people are going to be in bad positions. So I hope you're not one of those. Uh, if you are, it's just money. And you're going to survive. You're going to get through it because you're prepared. You're mentally prepared too, right? Don't get depressed over this stuff. If you're somebody losing money each month or going further into debt, folks, it's it's not just you. Uh, it's a lot of people, most people. And when most people are in the same boat, you know, it's probably not the fault of the person. It's probably something bigger at fault here. Uh, and that's this inflationary environment, this boom bust cycle that's been created by uh, the powers that be. Uh, anyways, folks, we're going to wrap it up here. Hope you guys like this report. We'll see you in the next video, hopefully. Please make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, still subscribe. Come back for more updates. We'll see you all very here soon. Peace.